Right, two brand new irons from Strix and Golf in my golf bag. We're out on the course, lovely morning here at Honnett and Golf Club. I'm just gonna dodge the green keepers a little bit and give these two irons a test. See how they blend with my lower irons as well because I use the Z forged in bladed lower irons. So I'm quite interested to see how these new ones blend with those as well. Should be a fun one. So the ZX7, we're going to see what restrictions say about them in a second. I'm seeing the normal V-cell that I've got on my other irons. Obviously we've got this little bit, they're both forged, but we've got a bit of cavity going on in the back as well. So we might see different launches and spins, which we will get dry ball data at the end from inside. The 7 is the slightly slimmer kind of player's one and the five that slightly bigger look but i say bigger they definitely i reckon could be blended which is something we're going to test because like i said i've got the ford so i go from blade actually up to a six iron in my bags the cleveland launch i go super chunky because i'm trying to manipulate lofts but these are much more gradual steps in these two right we're 175 to the flag so i'm going to hard a hard seven with the zx7 and then i'm going to hit a soft cut up six iron with the ZX5. Both from down by the ball, I'll be honest with you, it is quite hard to see which one is which. Like they do totally blend. Like these top lines are not far off each other at all. I flip them up this way, you do see a thicker sole on the six iron, which is the ZX5. Next to no offset, it's a very classic Strixon shape that hasn't really changed over the years I've tested clubs. To be honest with you, I quite like it. If anything, maybe. This one looks, and I don't know if this is true, but it just looks like I put it down like less toe end here without grooves on. It almost feels like the grooves are more across the face. I don't know if that's true or not. But very happy with how that looks compared to what it would be replacing in my bag because I wouldn't want it to change in looks because I think it just does look good. And if I look at online comments, that's one of the kind of overriding things is people do love the look restrictions when they test them. So hard seven. Again, that feels no different to what I'm used to. Lost it a bit in the sun. And there it is, left side. Nice shot. Um, yeah, the feel is exactly what I'm used to in the others. Uh, apart from it being clean, shiny, maybe slightly different look on the face, possibly. I wouldn't know that wasn't the 7 iron I normally gain in the old one. And again, for me, that's just a good thing. So now I'm going to do the 5, cut up soft little 6 iron. I think it's so important when you test I'm going to show you dry ball standard data numbers at uh, the end of this video from inside. But testing irons for me is about hitting all these shots I want to hit with the different clubs. That's really how I'm going to get that nice test rather than just trying to bomb them down the range, which is something that so easily people get mixed up in. Cutty little six iron. Again, that didn't feel any different up the left side as well, actually. Yeah, they're both almost in the exact same spot. Control. It's kind of that Ford sound, solid. I mean, should we go and see what Strixon are saying about these clubs? So let's see what Strixon are saying about these two irons. So ZX5 comes with a main frame. So the mill pattern on the back side of each ZX5 iron face maximizes COR for more ball speed and more distance on every shot. So again, they're talking about trying to move COR up on as you move away from the middle of that club, start miss hitting. We're gonna try and all they're trying to keep up those ball speeds. The ZX5 also has progressive grooves. Grooves in the eight iron through the pitching wedge are sharper, narrower and deeper. So for more spin, stopping power on approach shots into greens. So they're changing the grooves from the long irons through to the short irons again, try and give you control. We see the tall VT sole as well on these irons that we've seen in prior models. And it's a multi-piece construction iron. So we get tungsten in the toe of the ZX5 long iron and mid iron, so three to seven iron. Increase MOI from that and stability and forgiveness, they're saying. A forged sub 10 face enhances speed and distance while a forged 1020 carbon steel body absorbs a vibration for extremely soft feel. So if we see how that compares to the ZX7. So in the ZX7, we see the progressive grooves from the eight iron through the pitching wedge. We see the same tall VT sole. Multi-construction, again, ZX7, long irons, three iron to seven iron for MOI and then 1020 carbon steel body for feel. So the same as the ZX5. And then in the ZX7, we see the tall cavity. So the mass reposition to the sweet spot of the ZX7s and the perimeter 
to provide remarkably soft feel at impact and increased workability is what Srixon say. So similarities between the two clubs, but also they're slightly branching away in their tech to try and really dive into the kind of players they're aimed at. So this is what I want to see when I'm testing irons. I want to see max distance, kind of minimum distance, and I want to see a control of distance. So I'm across the two clubs there, the seven and the five, but I'm able to hit the shot that I wanted to hit, the clubs enabling me to do what I want. And I think that's something that's sometimes lost in fittings. It does get so launch, monitor, number, smash, smash, smash ball centric. Yes, I want to know how far I can hit them. Having less club into greens definitely is going to help me. But I need to know how the soft ones and the controlled ones, the higher, the lower ones, the less spin, the more spin ones are going to go as well. Which is often where this kind of on course testing, if you can get a chance to do it, is so much better. If you can't, I understand people get upset when I say that we can't all get on the course. I get that. I get that. You can do this inside as well. You need to just not be going faster, 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 and ending up like with your fastest hit, which is often the way a fit goes. Control as well as speed. It's a good thing to practice when testing. But that's what I want to see. Distance control. So let's take a look at these two four irons. You can see the thicker sole here on the five to the seven with the more kind of what you'd call players gaming sole. So both the same design, it's just one in theory might offer what we call help. Now I've done tests on this. If it offers more help, that's debatable. What I would be expecting to see from these clubs, which we'll test like I say on the indoor numbers, is it it, how you define help I think is what people get lost with. And certainly with my testing, what I think is where people get a bit mixed up. The thicker sole on the five, certainly in an iron like a four, and I don't game, I use hybrid, when my launch starts getting compromised, so it cuts, gets getting a little bit low, certainly if you put me in rough, and if the launch comes down, then my distance drops, so this club doesn't do what a four iron needs to do, it drops back to my five iron, which then makes it a pointless club. The added launch that the five gives me over the seven, in theory, is where I think the help comes from. Off center hit, I reckon it's so minuscule, you would have to be a serious stat taker over a few seasons to see the difference in that. But if you don't mind the looks and you believe that it does give you a little bit more help off centre hits, then giving that away would be pointless. Like you could use it. It's like your choice, I think. So we're going to go seven to start. When I put it down by the ball, it's next to an offset. It's a great looking four iron. You know, if I had the speeds and power to whip this from all over the place, yeah, I get it's romantic. And when I compare it to the five, you see no, it's a slightly thinner line, but it's hardly noticeable. You don't see any of the club out the back, which I like, even though you do get the chunkier uh, sole in that five, it's not coming out the back, which I like. And both of them seem to have very similar appearing offsets. So seven, in theory the harder the hit one. Again, it's that kind of bladed, not bladed, forged feel, sound, just nice off a tee. Like, I've got no problem hitting four irons off a tee. Like, if, if, if every four iron I ever played was off a tee, I would probably have one in the bag. It's not a problem. It's when I'm compromised on launch, so certain situations, I just need the help of a hybrid more than this. That looks good and classic. Let's see if I can see any difference from the seven to the five. So this being the five, again, putting it down by the ball, it's minuscule visual difference. Hit that solid. Again, I don't think there's any difference in the sound, which then interpreted as feel. I didn't see any difference in the height or flight, particularly that I didn't put in. But again, with these two clubs, because they're so tight, I kind of would want them to look like they're doing the same. And the reason I say that is because I want them to blend. I want them to blend with my clubs. I don't want a big jump. Now I say that I have a big jump in my six iron to seven iron. So for me personally, I'm not afraid of big jumps, but I know from selling clubs and talking to students over years, they're definitely scared of that. So I think what they're doing is they're keeping that blend as kind of smooth as possible to give you as much help in that launch area, possibly, again, you need to test for you, and for it not to be such a huge shock, because I'm a bit different. Most people are wanting their clubs to just blend all smoothly, but I think that will change. <laughs> this is why I don't game a four iron. This is the seven, and the exact same distance, 
but it's caught the rough so i reckon this one would have gone a fraction further possibly being the five but the dispersion between the two is exactly why I game hybrids to be honest with you this was a slight heel cut the one that's landed on the fairway with my hybrid roll and bulge on the face i reckon it would have started further left it would have got closer to the better strike over there this is you know four iron for me hello friend is i don't care how, how much help they put it in i'm just not getting the most out of that and i think this is the main point so if i now go to my Z Forge blade in a pitching wedge, like this just seamlessly cuts in down into this, like it blends with those, and that's what I like. And I think it's happening slowly. And like with everything in golf, if it happens too quick, people get a little scared. I think the more you get your clubs individually fit, so my six iron is very different fitting from my pitching wedge to my seven iron, there's a jump as well and then up to my hybrids. Because I have very good access to equipment and the ability to test, very easy for me to make sure I get the clubs that I want at every step. But it's also easier for you as well. It's just about pushing those pros as well to make sure they get out of that habit of just thinking, I'm gonna sell you a set of clubs. And again, the feel to my Z forge through to those, it just does what I want. It blends, it, it sits nicely. Let's go over and get this other four iron all the way over here. All right, let's go inside and see what the data looks like from the Foresight Studio collected uh, a couple of days ago, actually. Let's go and see if we actually are seeing a difference between these two irons. So let's look at the 9 iron data first. Uh, ball speeds across the two clubs are very similar. Launch angle then slightly changing. So you can see the 7 is launching a fraction lower than the ZX5. Spin again changing by 300 revs, um, 6.5 to 6.8 in the ZX7. And then the carries working out to be exactly the same, which to be honest with you, in a 9 iron with that amount of loft, slight variations in those numbers could be me as much as anything else, but I wouldn't expect to see much difference in those two. Let's go on to the seven iron. So the seven iron, we start seeing a sneaking difference in the ZX5. Again, this could be me, but we're seeing three yards extra carry. Very similar on spin, a fraction lower, but it's so tight with the ZX5 to seven. And then we see the launch angle again, just changing by a degree. So at the moment, quite consistently, the five is launching that little bit higher and just reducing that spin a fraction. And we're now starting to see a, a, a tiny change in difference in distance. Let's see what happens when we move over to the five iron. So now we see a five yards different carry. We see nearly two degrees in launch. So ZX5 launching at 18.8 compared to the seven at 16.9. And then we see again, 300 revs in spin. So very consistently, the five to the seven is doing what you'd want it to do. It's just bridging and just edging away from each other on launch, spin, and then resulting distance. Obviously for me, the resulting distance is coming from the lower spin and slightly higher launch. And when you push me up to a five iron, I'm not surprised that's where we see the biggest difference in carry because if you give a golfer a certain amount of loft that they can handle, unless the club is really massively different and it would have to be massively different, you're gonna see similar spins, similar launches, those kind of things. It's when launch is compromised, so when you get to a speed of a player where if you start taking loft off, they start dropping launch, so they lose distance because of that reduction in launch. This is where the tech, the different sizes, the different shapes do start to come through. And the more and more I test, the more and more I do this, and we're looking at what's friendlier and what's not, Often it's the launch which is then interpreted as being friendlier across the face. Because I personally wouldn't see a difference and didn't feel a difference out on the course between these two irons on off centre hits as much as all manufacturers want to talk about that. But as you can see from the numbers, if you want a little bit more launch, but spin will come down, the 5 will do that over the ZX7. If you want to keep spin up and you've got speed and can put launch in, then the ZX7 is gonna be a better option, possibly, depending on what you want. And for me, it will be a crossover between the two because I'm gonna match it to the launch that the loft delivers. 
So I could definitely see myself using both of these through my set because I've got a bridge gap between a six iron that's very, very chunky. And I can see these being a great option for people like me who want to blend. And I honestly think this is where the clubs will go. Getting each club individually fit rather than getting fit for sets has to be where this moves. I've got a video coming on this shortly with my set and new in the bag as I talk to you how I've integrated these clubs, which one's into my bag. Let me know in the comments down below if you're keen and you want to see that. There you go, ZX7, ZX5. Um, post comments down below. Let me know if you played Tricks and Irons before or not. Have you tested them? How did you go? They were better, they were worse. Let me know down in that comments. You love the look of them, you hate the look. Again, let me know down there. If you didn't buy a set, or you did, what were they up against? What beat them and what didn't beat them when you were testing them? I'd love to hear. So for me, really excited that the looks are as good and as classic as before. The feels are very much in line with what I had before. And the launch characteristics are very much in line with what I had before. If you had a set of clubs that you've recently bought, would you be going out and rushing and buying these? I would say go and get fit if you wanted a new set, but you probably don't need to. Like these, these are just performing good. They're not outperforming anything. They're just performing nice and solid. If you're looking at a new set of clubs, ZX5, ZX7, definitely something you should put on the test list. And I would be really interested to know if it is something that you did like or not. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. As always, um, like I said, I've got a new in the bag coming. Post comments down below. Let me know if you want to see that or not, because it is quite a fun video, how I blend my set so massively around a certain area. And I think it's a place where lots of people can really learn. And I think the stepping in these clubs is a really good conversation. And we saw it with, I've seen it with Titleist, TaylorMade now as well, um, Ping are doing it. Different sets of irons that are actually trying to be very similar because I do think the blended set is where we're going. The tall players are already doing it because they're trying to maximize each shot. I think we should be doing it as well. Thanks for watching everybody.